What's up, friends? If you've been in Web3 for a while, you've probably heard at this point about proof of stake networks and actually staking your assets, but maybe you don't really know what that means, or maybe you do know what it means, but it just feels a little bit intimidating to actually do it. Today, we're going to really dig into how you can make it an easy process to get involved in staking your assets using Core Wallet on the Avalanche Network. So let's get into that. Now, before we talk about actually how to do it, let's talk about what it is. So really when you are staking your assets on Avalanche, uh, really you're generally doing one of two different things. One of the ways you can do it is by being a validator uh, and the other is being a delegator. So validating the network is actually running a node where you actually um, are processing transactions, communicating with other nodes, uh, essentially making the blockchain come to life. And in order to do that, you need to have 2000 AVAX and a machine that's capable of actually doing that. There's certain specifications that are required in order to do that. Uh, and then if you have that all in place, a consistent network connection, you can actually do that by validating the network. Now, if you're not quite at that level, you can still participate in that process by being a delegator. And basically what that means is you find a validator that um, has available delegations and you're going to stake your assets with them, uh, essentially kind of giving them credit for the AVAX that you're going to stake. And then you also get the benefit of the rewards of the validation process. So those are really kind of the two main ways that you do it. Uh, now to become a validator, as we talked about, you need 2000 AVAX. To become a delegator, you need at least 25 AVAX. Um, so that's what you need in order to be able to do that. So now let's talk about why would you want to do either of these different things? So one of them is, as I mentioned before, um, securing the networks. So you're actually helping to make the blockchain come to life by either validating or delegating. There's also a financial incentive to doing that as well. So by delegating your assets, you actually do earn some returns um, on the assets that you're delegating because the validators that are running are actually earning fees and they're able to share some of that with you through that process. Um, and those fees are gonna vary a little bit. They also um, will kind of take like obviously a bit of it for themselves because they're doing a lot of the hard work running the validator and making sure that the server is up, all those kinds of things. So those are the benefits. Uh, there are, of course, going to be some risks to that as well. One of them is liquidity risk. So you are going to have to choose in advance a period of time that your AVAX is going to be staked. So um, if you've, let's say you set it for three months and you need your asset sooner than that, you're don't really have a way to do that. So um, they are locked in a smart contract until the time that it's time for you to remove your delegation and receive your reward. So that's one of the things that, that can happen with that. Uh, the other is you need to trust your validator. So if that validator does not keep the right amount of uptime, then they're not gonna be continuing to earn any rewards, meaning that you're also not gonna be earning any rewards. So you wanna do a little bit of your homework before you choose um, a validator that you're gonna delegate your assets to. Now, one thing that is nice on the Avalanche network that some other proof of stake networks have is that there is no slashing. So in some other networks like Ethereum, if you don't maintain your validator up and running, in addition to not receiving your returns, uh, you'll actually have some of your you know, Ethereum or whatever it is taken from you. So uh, that is a factor to consider for other networks with Avalanche really just means you're not going to receive the returns that you might have gotten otherwise. So a couple of things to be thinking about there. So we're going to go next into how to actually do the delegation now. But before we get into that, I do want to make sure that I do mention that none of what we share today is financial advice. If you do choose to validate or delegate, please do some additional research to make sure that that is the right choice for you financially. We're really just going through kind of the steps to do it if it is something that you do choose to, to do. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into how we actually are going to do the process of delegating some of our assets. So there's a few different steps to that. First of all, what you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have the core wallet extension added to your browser. And then you're going to also want to go to the core for the web um, site so you can actually do that process. So you can see here we are in my home page for my demo wallet uh, that we're going to be using in order to show you how this process works. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that your funds are on the proper chain. So uh, most activity on Avalanche happens on the C chain. That's the contract chain. That's where all of the DeFi activity is, NFTs, all of those kinds of things. Uh, smart contracts can exist there. Um, that's not actually the place where you stake your assets uh, if you're doing uh, you know, native staking on Avalanche. So you're going to want to move those assets over to the P chain um, so that you actually can do that validation. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to click here on the left side. You see there's a place that says stake and I'm going to choose cross-chain transfer. So you'll see here that um, I don't have any funds on the P chain yet, uh, but we're going to actually move those over. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to start with my assets on the C chain, and then I'm going to transfer them over to the P chain. 
and I put in how much I'm going to actually transfer over. So I mentioned before, you need a minimum of 25 AVACs. We'll go ahead and transfer over 26 just to make sure that I have enough for gas fees and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in and I'm going to choose export. It's going to take me to my approval screen. I'm going to approve that I want to do that. Uh, we're going to give it just a moment and we're ready to do the import itself. So I'm going to click on import and it's going to take just a bit. It looks like my export is about ready to go. I'm going to approve it. All right. And my transaction is now approved. So in order to see that, if I wanted to actually go and look at what I have, I can actually go back here to my portfolio and you can now see that I have uh, 519 US dollars worth of AVAX on the P chain and then 21 on the C chain. So those are moved over there. All right. So one of the things you're going to notice that is a little bit different is the P chain actually has a different wallet address than your uh, address is on the C chain and then other EVM chains. So if you look here on the page, you'll notice that I have a different wallet address for my P chain wallet and the core is going to automatically give that to you. So you'll, you'll have that available for you there pretty easily. All right. So now my assets are on the P chain. Now the next step is I'm going to actually stake them. So I'm going to go over here to stake. Uh, you see, there's an option both for validation and delegation. We're going to do delegation today because as much as I would love to say, I have 2000 AVAX, I do not have that, uh, at least not in my uh, demo wallets. Uh, we're going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and stake 25 AVAX, and then I'm going to go to next. The next thing that we're going to do is actually choose the node that we're going to delegate to. Now, um, this one, again, as I mentioned before, there is some risk to choosing who your validator is. You want to make sure that they have good uptime, um, and you also want to look at the fees that they charge. So different validators can charge different fees um, for um, allowing you to delegate with them. And that fee is going to be a percentage of your return. So it's not going to be a 2% on however much AVAX actually put in. It's 2% on the return that you get. Uh, so it's an important thing to be thinking about. So you look here, you see there's a few different ones. Um, you can see how many delegators that they have. You can see how much um, AVAX is available for you to be able to, to delegate when their staking time is going to end. Uh, so that's an important factor as well. So you can set your delegation up to the amount of time that that validator has set their stake for. So for example, if I were to um, choose this one up here on top, they end on August 22nd. And so today is August 7th. Um, and so I really would only be able to delegate with them for a short period of time. And so that's one thing to be factoring in is how long do you want to delegate? You can choose one that has a far out date. Um, and then you can just choose whatever time within that frame uh, works for you. Another thing you're going to look at is the fee that they're charging. So I mentioned before, they can charge different fees. You can see there's a, a big variety of fees that the different validators are charging. Um, so you want to choose the one that's right for you. Uh, and then you can also see their uptime, which most of these that are on this page have 100% uptime. You can see this one down here at the bottom has a little bit less than that. They had some time they were down. If I were to keep going through this list, you'd see that I had a few others that maybe weren't as good. So you see this one, for example, um, they're not up at all. So you don't want to choose that one because your funds aren't going to earn any return if you did. Um, so I would go ahead and choose one. Let's just say I did want to go with this one here. That one's not... Um, coming due until a year from now, essentially, um, they are charging a little bit higher fee. So maybe I don't want to do that one actually, actually, uh, let's say I just wanted to go ahead and validate for a few months. I'll choose this one here. This one's October 2nd. And so I got a good period of time for that. Their fees relatively low. Their uptime looks good. Um, you could also do additional due diligence. If you kind of grab that node ID, put it into a block explorer, you could see more detail on that. I'm going to go and choose that one. I'm going to go to next. And then now I'm going to choose how long do I want to delegate with them. Um, so again, you have a minimum of 14 days, um, or you can go to the max of the node. So it'll automatically just go to whatever that date was. And you'll see here, it's going to show, you know, what is my expected return on that? Now, it's estimated, right? So I mentioned before, if they have any downtime, you're not going to be earning any returns during that downtime. So you want to make sure that you're choosing one that you trust, which in this case, they do have a good track record. Um, so we're going to probably go ahead and trust them for this. But again, do your own research, make sure you choose the, the validator that's right for you. You can see here that I'm estimated to earn uh, 0.233 AVAX on my 25 AVAX that I stake. Um, and so you can see that in percentage terms as well. Then I would go here to next. I'm going to do it with my connected wallet, which is this one that we're using now. I'm going to go to next. 
and then it's going to show me everything that I'm doing. So it'll show the details for when I'm going to be starting, when I'm going to be finishing, uh, and so on and so forth. And if I did want to go ahead and do this delegation, I'm going to go ahead and click on submit delegation, and it'll take me to a page where I will actually do the process of approving the transaction, getting at stake, that kind of thing. So it's, it's a pretty simple process to do that. I know it can be a little intimidating moving between chains, uh, but the Core Wallet actually makes it really easy to be able to do that. It's also nice that you can see all of your assets, um, whether they're on the C chain, the P chain, or the X chain. Uh, so really easy to do that as well. Uh, so I'm not going to submit that delegation today. This is just for demo purposes, uh, but that's really how you, how you do that. Now, once you've finished with that, you can actually go to your portfolio uh, and over here, it'll actually show you uh, your delegation. Of course, I don't have any in this particular wallet, um, but you're able to view that here as well, which is, which is also pretty nice. All right, friends. Well, hopefully you found this information useful. Um, if you are interested in learning more about delegation, uh, you can definitely find more information on the Avalanche documentation website. I'll go ahead and link that within here as well. Uh, but really appreciate you watching. Um, if you're interested in learning other ways to stake, so today we covered that native staking process by delegating. Uh, if you're interested in learning other ways to stake using uh, liquid staking, uh, we'll have another video on that topic. So stay tuned for that. Um, we will uh, link that in the notes as well. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you liked, if you found today's information useful, please like and give a follow um, and put a comment. So if you do try any of these things and you have anything that you want to share uh, in terms of what worked for you, what questions you have, I'm always happy to engage that way as well. Uh, but thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day.